Hello, my name is Benjamin Hahn, and I'm on the Applied Machine Learning team at Lyft. I'm here to present work with Jared Gabor on contextual bandits for advertising budgeting. Firstly, I'll give an introduction to Lyft and the goals of our system, known internally as the Spend Allocator. Uh, Lyft is a transportation uh, network company. We dispatch idle drivers to passenger ride requests in the transportation marketplace. Our goal is to maximize ride fare while maintaining low ETA, by maintaining sufficient idle drivers in our reserve to handle future ride requests. This means we need to carefully control both request demand and driver supply. Uh, it's possible to control demand very quickly with surge pricing, which is responsive within minutes uh, and slightly slower to, to manage supply using incentives, which usually take about hours before drivers respond. Customer acquisition is the cheapest method for increasing either supply or demand, but it's the slowest. Our goal is to budget these ad campaigns to include advertising costs, background checks, and the incentive, such as the $1,000 uh, bonus after 500 completed rides every day. Um, we have roughly 30,000 campaigns in 2020 over 300 regions on platforms like Google, Facebook, Indeed, and Craigslist. We frame driver acquisition as a constrained optimization, maximizing driver acquisition given a total budget. Last year at AdKDD, we observed a similar strategy used at Criteo, uh, described by Delia, solving budget allocation using derivative of the payout or the marginal return on interest. This reduces the problem to accurately evaluating f of x or the payouts per campaign. Equivalently, we can set a maximum cost per incremental acquisition to define profitability constraint. The CPIA transforms our budget constraint into a profitability constraint, estimating the value of a driver as the net profit per ride and the incremental rides of the driver. We can guarantee acquisition to be profitable in expectation if the value of the driver exceeds the CPIA. CPIA targets are provided externally based on forecast supply and demand in our system. Uh, budgets are set by aligning the CPIA just as the Cotea example aligned marginal return on interest. Then our problem formulation is given historical campaign performance and regional CPIA targets, allocate a daily budget for each campaign to maximize the total acquisition. Intuitively, our system should aggressively fund campaigns with strong returns and defund or remove the weaker campaigns. The challenge of this is how can we quickly identify which campaigns are strong in the face of risk and uncertainty? How do we handle cold start issues for new campaigns without significant performance history? Our system known as the spend allocator has three components for solving these problems. We have contextual modeling near sample or interpolation. We use linear regression for extrapolation far from sample and Thompson sampling for managing the exploration and exploitation trade-offs. Firstly, we create point predictions of campaign performance outcomes using a series of proposal budgets. These point predictions augment the observed data set to support cold start campaigns with few data points. These predictions are dominated by the proposed budget, but also consider contextual features such as the age of the creative, the target demographic, the region, impressions, clicks, leads, performance statistics, the displayed incentive, and the day of the week. This model is trained on the entire performance history across all regions, including for deprecated campaigns that were ineffective. This model has excellent performance near sample or close to historical budgets. However, it extrapolates poorly to unobserved budgets. Um, in the extreme, a tree-based model's predictions are clipped by the minimum and maximum observed target value. Furthermore, these point predictions are not differentiable for use in our proposed portfolio maximization strategy using the cost per incremental activation. We assert a few payout function properties based on economic principles to support our described portfolio maximization strategy. Firstly, the function must be differentiable to compute the marginal return on investment or the cost per incremental activation. Secondly, the function must be monotonically increasing where more allocated budgets always yields more driver activations for each campaign. Lastly, the function must have sublinear growth with respect to the budget or diminishing returns. It is typical for many ad campaigns with large budgets to have reached the entire available audience and to stop producing additional returns, even with larger budget. 
to satisfy these properties, we impose a power law to our um, payout function. Uh, these, these constraints are satisfied when our um, form has a positive coefficient and an exponent bounded between zero and one. To fit this curve, we apply a linear regression providing stable estimates far beyond our observed history. Our fit consumes both the observed history for a campaign in addition to a series of augmented data points produced by the contextual payout model. The augmented data points are predicted using a snapshot of the most recent contextual features for the target campaign and a linearly spaced sequence of budgets chosen near the observed history where model performance is best. Our power law form ensures that these predictions are stable beyond these target budgets and the allocated budget growth rate grows at a reasonable rate. However, to apply a, an explore exploit policy, it is necessary to have some measure of uncertainty. We apply a Bayesian linear regression to provide covariance estimates of our curve parameters using a distribution of curves that fit our campaign payout estimates. In the cases where these curves do not satisfy our previous constraints of diminishing marginal returns or monotonically increasing growth, we will reject these samples and resample uh, points and fit our curve again with stronger priors. Using the curve distribution, we will Thompson sample to manage the explore exploit trade-off. New campaigns without significant performance observation history or campaigns with significant outcome variance will be more often allocated an exploratory budget, much larger or higher than the budget evaluated by the best fit curve. This provides a more diverse data set for future exploitation. Campaigns with established history are more predictable and can be priced more accurately and consistently. The system provides a principled approach to budget exploration and avoids local minima from a greedy approach. We deployed our system to a seven week AB test over seven cities. Over the first three weeks of experiment, uh, we, after the first three weeks of experiment, we swapped the control and test cities to measure the difference in performance within each city. We delayed measurement for one week after the swap to minimize any interference effects due to exposure from the previous effect. Because it is difficult to measure incrementality directly, we instead measure the mean cost per acquisition relative to a counterfactual case using the pre-experiment performance. To compare pre-experiment performance, we use least squares regression to fit a curve, providing a smooth function defined at all possible budgets, including for budgets not observed. We then compare the actual performance of our control and treatment measurements in comparison to this function. Overall, we measure a 22% reduction in mean cost per acquisition while controlling for both location and time. This represents a $30 million annual savings for Lyft, or roughly 1.5 cents per ad. Shortly after this experiment, this system was deployed to all regions. In 2018, this system was responsible for allocating nearly half a billion dollars of annual budget. In summary, we propose the system for allocating budgets where incentive opportunities are high risk and uncertainty. We reframed existing strategies for portfolio maximization using marginal return on investment to a profitability constraint based on the cost per incremental acquisition. For unknown payouts, we used random forest and Bayesian linear regression to estimate payouts and their uncertainty for each campaign. The random forest provides excellent point predictions near sample while Bayesian linear regression extrapolates these curves far from sample while providing an estimate of uncertainty. Using the covariance estimates provided by Bayesian linear regression, we apply Thompson sampling to explore the budget space to provide better data for future exploitation. In experiment, we measure a 22% reduction to mean cost per acquisition over the existing Markov chain Monte Carlo approach. The system is deployed globally and responsible for allocating hundreds of millions of dollars annually. Thank you for your time. Again, my name is Benjamin Hahn, and I presented work with Jared Gabor on contextual bandits for advertising budgeting. Please feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any questions, comments, or feedback. Uh, Lyft Applied Machine Learning is hiring, and I would love to connect with you if you're interested in our work using multi-arm bandits and reinforcement learning.